what is going on my fellow warriors Evelyn here hope you're having a wonderful day today so guys today's video is going to be a 1vx guide specifically with just for bgs for arms warriors if you guys want me to do it for 1v2 arenas maybe 1v3 arenas at some point i will make that later on okay so the guide is going to consist of five parts so the first part is the mentality slash attitude you're going to have going into this then obviously the next part is going to be what talents you're going to use then your own talents you're going to use then we're going to go over some kind of strats that I would go about, ideas I would think about, and then finally I'm going to do a live commentary over a win and both a loss of doing a 1vx situation. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so for the first part of the guide, we're going to go over the mindset you're going to kind of have going into these situations. Now, people think that you go into a situation there's like a maximum amount of people you can fight. Like, let's say some people think that you can only fight three people or you can only fight two people. There's no actual maximum amount of people you can fight, no matter what expansion you're playing no matter how you're doing now it does obviously help that i have 50 traits as an arms warrior when i go into my talents here you can see that i have 50 traits but i obviously only had about 46 or 45 when i actually did this video so obviously there's quite a few things that are going to change a lot of these clips are back from then anyways but yeah it does help having the healing talent i would specifically say that you need to have the artifact healing talent before you're actually going to try this this talent here solar sword is very very important so Obviously, you go into these situations to force yourself to learn how to play. So, the way you learn through experience anything, if you don't do enough of it, you're not going to get used to it. So, as me, I regularly push myself to fight multiple opponents. And every time I do it, I learn from it. I learn a lot. I learn what to do, how to react, what things I should be doing, and a lot of things that make it so easier, and how I develop the spec I have. So, with that being said, I'm going to give you guys, we're going to start with Iron Towns. You're going to want to have players, but then foremost and foremost, because you're going to want to be able to trink at the first CC, maybe reflect anything if you can. Obviously important. Next, these two tiers here, depending on what you're fighting. You're fighting like a melee heavy comp. Uh, let's say you're fighting like a lot of 3DKs, like that, or 3DK, 3D hunt, 3D hunters, two rogues, anything like that. You're going to want, obviously want to have sparring and disarm. Now you're fighting a caster heavy comp, like lots of mages, shadow priests, uh, warlocks, wherever you're gonna have reinforced armor and death sentence. Next thing you want to want to have is you're gonna want to have spell effect. Now, why would you go spell effect over EDUs too? Simply because there's a lot of things that can be reflected for melee, not just casters. For melee, demon hunters, when they go in the air, you can reflect that. You can reflect hodges from rep paladins. You can reflect stuns from unholy decays. You can reflect hexes from enhanced shamans. It's, it's limited. There's no limit to what you can do with spell effect. Spell effect is a must-have in all situations. The next tier you're going to want to have War Banner. And the reason we're going to have War Banner over your two is the duel doesn't do anything when you're on your own. It's more of a appeal for somebody else. So obviously 1vx, not going to want this. Pain Train, 45 second cooldown on your battle cry. Sounds pretty nice, but it's not actually that great. Most 1vx situations last about 20 to 30 seconds. Sometimes 40 if you're really lucky. Now there is a sometimes that you may last the full 45 seconds and get a second battle cry in. But it's very rare that's going to happen. And I feel like War Banner is going to make it a bit better for you, specifically when you're finding a lot of casters or a lot of CC classes that are going to stun you quite a lot. But War Banner is definitely a must in, in 1vx situation. Now for the last tier, you're going to want to have Sharp Blade. And the reason why Sharp Blade is, Sharp classes has kind of become null and void, specifically because of the artifact ability that you get when you get four talents and precise strikes, making it so your cluster smash and execute and more strike. Pretty much, there's no rage cost there. <laughs> like, like you get like 60 percent reduced rage cost so you're gonna find it so you never need that and obviously reset cost mass sounds nice but sharp blade is just so good if you hit two targets with your sharp blade while you have sweeping strikes you will do a lot of damage and you do a lot of cleave damage as well because of it so it's really nice to have sharp blade definitely my choice here the next thing we're gonna go with the talents the talents you want to have is sweeping strikes obviously as i showed you a second ago Sweeping strikes by far the best of the choice. You hitting two targets with more strike and execute is really really nice when it's combined with sharp and blade. Like I said, obviously the next tier you're gonna have shockwave. I would see shockwave being the best in all situations, honestly. Okay, so for the next tier you're gonna have avatar, and the reason why we're gonna have avatar is because avatar not only does damage, but it's also a freedom to get any roots or snares that you might be stuck in when you're trying to catch up an opponent. Tier 4 defensive stance is by far the best and the reason being is 20% reduced damage is awesome and at the same time it also gives you more time to heal keeping yourself alive longer in the fight. 
tier 5 moral combo is the best best choice because it combines with sweeping strikes and sharp blade to give you tons of cleave damage helping you tear down your opponents now titanic might is really nice as well because when you use your war breaker you will get a 24 second aoe cluster smash smashing all your targets so when you blade storm straight after this you're gonna find that you're gonna do a, heck, a lot of damage i mean a lot of damage really quickly especially if you've got battle cry up the last tier is opportunity strikes now why opportunity strikes because it procs quite a lot on a single target so i find this does the most damage out of the tree just it makes you kill your current target really quickly so it allows you to get that victory rush and then heal yourself at three percent and then get back on next opponent obviously another thing you want to do when you're victory rushing is you want to use rally cry and the reason you use rally cry because it doesn't really do anything outside of using rally cry so if you're like really low when you got a victory rush rally cry first victory rush and then before you get more health because your health will be higher and 30% of that health will be increased heals. Okay, so for the next part, I'm going to describe a situation on where you're going to 1vx, and I'm going to talk about some of the bad things, good things that you do during this situation. So with all these tools that come into play, what are you going to do with them? Well, specifically, when you're going to any 1vx situation, you're going to want to look out for the casters, or specifically, even the healers. And the reason you want to look for the healers is because healers tend to basically spoil the fun so you want to take out them first so if you see any healers get on the first if there's two healers there's a very little chance you're going to come out with actually a 1vx so if you see two healers don't go in there if you see one go straight for the healer once you get the healer down the next person you want to kill is the caster and the reason you want to do this is because when you're on the caster you can obviously triple shockwave melee blade storm uh usually die with the sword from melee makes it so you can stay on the caster and the melee can't hit you it just makes it a bit easier for you to control the situation. Also, you've got your AoE sounds if you're a bluff, and if you're not a bluff, well then, rip. <laughs> then you have fear for melee, which gives you more time to kill any casters you need to kill, and allows you to eventually go back on the melee and finish out the melee. If you blade storm, you should find yourself that the melee actually have half health, and you can pretty much kill them really quickly. Another thing you obviously can do is disarm the melee, depending on which melee is doing the most damage. Or if you want the same melee to stop your healing like a dk or a fury ward because they tend to heal from doing damage so that's a few things that you could do in a 1vx situation now let's get straight into an actual real 1vx situation which i'll show you guys right now okay so for this next part i'm going to go over two situations one where i lose and one where i win giving you guys my life thoughts as we're going through it and what i feel i did right and what i did wrong afterwards okay so for this first clip here playing a shout priest a dk and a demon hunter Literally 5 seconds afterwards an enhanced shaman is going to come in and then about 15 seconds afterwards I think a prop warrior comes in at the end making it a 1v5. So the first person I'm going to go here because the rest of them are on melee is the shower priest because it's easier to control. I can survive the melee's damage with die with the sword, reflex, shockwaves, fears, disarms, everything just to keep myself alive from the melee. So I want to get a shower priest like I said, charge the shower priest here at the start and the puffball cooldowns out of that. Then I'm going to try triple shockwave them all after a pop cooler runs. Use my AV class smash, start with the sword, and then blade storm. Ripping apart to the Shadow Priest and the Enhanced and the Demon Hunter really quickly because they've all got the AV class smash debuff on them. I get stunned here and I do manage to use my Victory Rush in a few seconds here when I got on the DK. So I use my Victory Rush here and I'm doing a bit of damage to him now. I'm waiting for my shockwave here to deny up a nice shockwave. We do get the Sarm, so this slows my damage down. But then my shockwave comes off cooldown and I stun the two of them literally in a few seconds here. Now here after this I should have used this arm because the reason I should have used this arm is because you can see the DK is going to start healing himself. Now if I used this arm I would have actually gotten the kill on the DK. But because I wasn't able to get the root rush off the DK I ended up getting stunned by the prop warrior and dying. So what are the things I feel did bad and good in that? Well a lot of the good things to do was I made sure I took a lot less damage at the start. But it was also a bad thing in a sense because using double the sword way too soon kind of left me open to the DK being able to heal a lot more after I came out with that blade storm. Now obviously you wouldn't have started healing at 100% health, no DK in the world is going to do that. If I had a blade storm then mid blade storm about halfway through, then you would start with the sword, I would have stopped DK healing, got my victory rushes and then kill the DK, maybe disarmed him, stuff like that, making it so I can get the kill on the DK. Whether I killed the prop warrior or not was beyond me, prop warriors are really hard to kill, but I definitely would have gave him a good run from his money had I got that DK down. The other good and bad things I felt I did in that situation, but obviously being aware of what's going to happen is a main thing. What spells can be used against you, what ways to effectively disable your opponents and stuff like that in reaction time. Okay, so in this next clip, we find a Shadow Priest, a Disc Priest and two Ferals. Now in any 1vx situation, the first person you're going to want to kill is obviously the healer. So we need to get the Disc Priest down fast. 
So how do we get them down fast? The best way to do is you do it for me personally is you want to charge the target and put full cooldowns. Once you get your close smash debuff on the target, you then want to use your sharp blade and shockwave or belt silence depending on your preference. Then you want to use your more strike to get that more strike debuff on the target. Then you want to use a wall breaker to AOE close smash all the targets around you and then blade storm to do heavy AOE damage. This will make so the healer can't heal himself so they have 50% reduced healing and you're hitting him for about 3 to 400k blade storm kicks because of the berserker buff. Now this is the best way I found to kill healers and as you're going to see in this clip. So we're going to charge in here, pop full cooldowns, you use a sharpened blade, more strike the target, then use blade storm belt silence and restrain through the targets really really quickly. And then after that I'm going to go on sharp priest after the disc priest dies, kill the sharp priest really quickly, then I'm going to switch to the feral, execute that guy, then get stunned by this feral. And out of this then I'm going to pop my die with the sword, and I'm also going to use my victory rush for the heal. Then after that I'm going to charge the feral, and execute finishing the one before. Okay, so what are the good and bad things I did in this situation? The good things I did were, when I charged the targets, I put spell effect up. This effect he made so two priests couldn't do anything for three seconds. And then belt silenced them out, making it so they couldn't do anything for the further two seconds for a total of five. While I was also doing this, I popped my full cooldowns and cluster smashed my current target. Then I popped my sharpened blade and wall strike. This effectively put a debuff on three targets because of the sweeping strike. So it wasn't only on this priest, but it was also on the feral and the sharp priest too. This made it so really hard to heal. Then I belt silence and popped AB Clash Smash and Blade Storm. This effectively made it so I shredded through all the targets, doing a hell of a lot of damage called the Clash Smash debuff, and making it so they all died really, really quickly because they have 50% reduced healing. So, what are the bad things I did? The bad things I did was I wasn't using my victory rushes. The only victory rush I actually used was on the last furl when I was pretty much low health and Rally Cry was up at the same time. If I had used it before, I wouldn't have been anywhere near the whole health and I would have been fine completely. Another thing I did was I didn't shockwave the targets. This was pretty bad. I only shockwave later on in the fight, so I guess in a sense it could have made it a bit better. Another thing I did was I could have used Dive with the Sword a lot sooner, making so neither Feral could have done any damage to me while I was killing both the priests. So guys, that pretty much brings us to the end of the guy part of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you learned something from this video, make sure you give that video a big fat thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. Also subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more because I'm going to be posting more guides in the future. With that being said though, we're going to get into the next part of the video which is going to be me showing you guys all the 1vx fails that I did. Pretty much what I mean by fail though is, I mean if someone helped me, somebody healed me, someone who got involved in the fight for even a second or anything like that, or I died, something like that. But I feel like it's worthwhile watching because you might learn something from it. It'll show you the kind of situations I put myself in with no fear where I actually tried to push myself to a point where I can probably try to get 1v7s or any v8s or anything like that. I did attempt to do it but obviously it is really hard and it's not impossible but it's hard as you'll see in these clips. Anyways I'm going to play some music over them hopefully you guys will enjoy that and as always this is Ebono I love you all take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.